Trump. What is this? What Fox News? Look how distorted Fox News is. Take a look at how distorted what they're doing right now. With only 1% in, they're reporting that Trump is at 24%, Kasich 24%, and Cruz 24%. Can you believe this? When everyone knows that's a distorted... Boy, they're really bad. You know, they're really going to put themselves into recovery at Fox News. They ought to send themselves into rehab because they're all becoming like Megan, uh, the, the crocodile K uh, Kelly. Are they crazy? That's the, that's what they're posting right now. New Hampshire primary results, 24, 24, 24. That's not the results. They're doing it to, because they hate Trump. Now, for some reason, Murdoch has a vendetta against Trump. That's nonsense. 1% in already. They're all at 24%. That's such rubbish. That's not what the results are going to be. Now, let's look at the commie side. 64 to 32. It's not going to be like 99 to 1 when they get through with her. I don't know how she takes it. I just don't know how she can handle this. What a strong woman she is. I mean, if you were making a choice for the election based on strength, you'd have to choose Trump on the Republican side for strength. And frankly, both of them are, are nightmarishly strong. Where does Sanders, coming from the commie socialist DNA that he comes from, how does he get the strength at his age to run around and he gives the fist salute like a black power advocate? That's what I love the best. That is so pathetic. It's unbelievable. He's giving a fist salute like he's a communist on the rise now in South America. You know, him and uh, Maduro ought to, ought to have a, 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 a they're running a platform together. Bernie Sanders and Maduro, whatever his first name is. Primary caucus results. Uh, there's Ben Carson, the slippery tire. There's Jeb. Bo uh, you know, after this is over, no one will remember them. They're going to get huge book contracts, incidentally. I'll take a guess right now what kind of advances they could get with this kind of exposure. Cruz, $9 million. Uh, Trump, maybe an 18 to $20 million advance, top. Rubio, uh, $100,000 advance, because even though he's been overexposed, nobody would read anything he has to say unless it's an ice cream recipe for a new uh, Ben & Jerry's flavor as a result of him being in, the, in New England. Jeb Bush, maybe a $100 advance. Uh, Chris Christie, maybe uh, 50 grand. Let's go down the list. If I were in the publishing business, uh, Carly Fiorina, $50 for an advance for a book. They'd remainder it before she even types the first word. Ben Carson, he might sell books because he's such a nice guy. If he went back to when he stabbed someone and hit him with an axe, I want to hear more about that. If I, was, if I were his publisher, I'd say, look, Ben, here's the thing. You're a nice guy. You've got a lot of recognition right now. We want to do your book, but... During the campaign, you said you once were an angry man, and you actually stabbed someone, but the belt buckle stopped it. Open the book with who you stabbed and how the uh, the blade broke. Then you said once that you used a screwdriver on someone. That's chapter two. If you agree to talk about who you almost stabbed and stabbed with a screwdriver and hit with a knife, even though you didn't when you were young and you controlled your anger, we give you a total of a $500 advance because there might be 15 books sold to your family alone. Do you know there's a guy named Jim Gilmore running? Never heard of him. Where did this guy come from? How is he even running? Let's go to the Democrat side. If I were a publisher and I were offering advances to Hillary and Bernie, Hillary would get about a $100 million advance for the same reasons Goldman Sachs gave her $650,000 for three speeches. It's called uh, quid pro quo. Bernie, on the other hand, would get a huge advance because of all of the morons in America who don't read to begin with, who don't know Karl Marx or Vladimir Lenin are, uh, I would give him a monster advance because he could tell the story as though he invented it from the beginning and no one ever heard of it before. He's worth it. He's making a fortune on the road. Every time he appears and gives a fist bump, another hundred books get sold. Now let's go to the callers. W-E-Z-S in New Hampshire. Easy S. That's a good set of call letters. And that's in New Hampshire. What city is that in? Easy S is in Laconia and Concord, New Hampshire. I am live in New Hampshire. Andy on WEZS. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, hi, Michael. I work in recovery, and addiction, as you know, is a disease, and politicians need to address it as a public health issue. But the reason there's an epidemic or the kids are increasingly taking it is very trendy for kids to have pill parties, and they take oxycodone and and before they know it, they're hooked, and then when, when they're shut off, now it's much easier and cheaper to take heroin. So, um, how, do they, how do they get the oxycodone? Either, either they rob their parents' uh, 
uh, medicine cabinet or they get it uh, from other kids or whatever. It just seems like a, uh, a thing where where kids go through the medicine cabinets of, of their... All right, I, I accept that. So why then is there not a push in Congress to stop the manufacture of oxycodone, which is turning out to be perhaps the most addictive of all medicines ever made? Why they don't just ma make them stop making it? You're exactly right. Just like uh, Obama said to, instead of doing the surgery, take a pain pill. So I blame uh, not only the pharmaceuticals, but uh, Obamacare. But where does Obamacare fit into the addiction problem, in your estimation? Well, as Obama said, instead of paying to have the surgery done, just take a pain pill. Oh, because it's cheaper for the government. Exactly. How much does an oxy pill cost on the like on the street if they go to buy it in the in the gutter? I think they can get a hundred bucks per pill, and they can get a bag of heroin for one hit for ten bucks. So it's so much more economic. So what is it? Is it the cheap? Is it the cheap black tar heroin that's flooding in from Mexico now? Where is it coming from? They're getting it. It's coming up from Massachusetts, up from from the Hispanic uh, communities. So if you know that, and everyone writing about it knows where it's coming from, why is the federal government doing nothing about it? Good question. Unless they're uh, in the back pocket of pharmaceuticals, who knows? Oh my God. Well, yeah, well, let's not even follow the uh, dots on that one. All I can tell you is this. For years I was giving you the story of the opium addiction of the Chinese. Now, the Chinese were addicted by the British who flooded... Uh, China with opium and they it was a huge problem in China they totally demoralized the society there were opium dens all over China and opium of course as you well know became very popular people would be, their lives were wasted they'd lay in the opium den, den day and night smoking the pipe and the nation was demoralized the strength was sucked out of China the British did it the British did it on purpose one, for profit, and two, to make certain that the colony that they called China would not fight back. They weakened the entire society by doping them up. Does that sound familiar to you? Now, when did the opium epidemic end in China? Do you know how it ended? Did the government itself end the opium addiction in China? Did the British suddenly wake up one day and say we shouldn't do this to the Chinese people? No, neither of the above is true. The opium epidemic in China ended if you check it out, go look at the Boxer Revolution, the Boxer Rebellion, which I studied in high school, incidentally. I can't give you the exact year. What was it, 1908, if I remember, something in that era? And it wasn't entirely a result of the Boxer Rebellion, but it had something to do with it. They were the martial artists of China. They were the backbone of China. They were the strength of China. They were the men of China. And they hated the British. And they hated what the British were doing to China with the opium. And they caused a revolution in the country. And frankly, they began the end of the imperialism uh, that brought about an end to the opium addiction in China at that time. I don't know if there's a parallel here in America. I'm telling you what happened uh, in China at that time. There's a little subtext to this that's very important for people to hear it as you say, well, it's neither here nor there. But it's an interesting fact that I've quoted a few times over the last number of years. One of the heroes of the left in America is Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The middle name, that's FDR. He was a socialist American president. He was one of Obama's mentors. And his middle name, of course, was Delano. Delano was his maternal, uh, on his maternal side, the family name Delano. Now, how did his mother's father make the fortune? How did the Delano family make their fortune? Which led to the presidency, in part, because the fortune was used to get him into office. The Delanos made their money in the good old American way. They were drug transporters. Uh, they brought opium to China on American clipper ships for the British. Did you know that? That the Delano, check it out and see if I'm inventing it. The Delanos were the drug couriers for the British Empire. They transported the opium to China on clipper ships and the rest is history and of course as you well know in America money goes from red to white in two generations. It's been well, well established uh, if you just tra track that one. But nevertheless, the point is is something that you should know about. It's not an aspersion on all Democrats or on Delano. I'm just telling you how it was made. It's a result of my wide-ranging knowledge and also my wide reading 
And the wealth of Michael Savage's knowledge is simply fascinating, once wrote a San Francisco newspaper long before I went into radio. That's right, when they still had a newspaper here and they were publishing my health books, they said the wealth of Savage's knowledge is overwhelming. I'll be right back. No, it has nothing to do with the addiction problem in America. Not the music, not the degenerate movies. No, none of it. From the granite state to the opiate state in one generation. That's all. Not one person talked about the drug problem in America till I raised the issue five weeks ago. Now all of a sudden they're all going to cure it. From the granite state to the opiate state. So what are the main industries in New Hampshire? Manufacturing and high-tech industries, we read. 18% of the economy. That's very good. That's very good. No, high tech by the manufacturing industry. Well, you, most of the small factories were, deep, were um, eliminated and sold to China under Bill Clinton. It decimated the Midwest. It decimated the manufacturing states in New England. Bill Clinton destroyed the manufacturing industries in America. He literally let the Chinese come in and buy up factories w down to the last piece of equipment which they, so they shipped over to China. Now, of course, all the equipment's antiquated by now, but they took our whole manufacturing base from America to China. Bill Clinton let it happen. So don't tell me there's no reason for this. Number two, health care, that's an industry? No kidding. You turn on the news every minute, there's an ad for Amugaba, Amaha, Humacare, Hamacare. Don't take it if you don't want to die, but if you take it, be sure you're liable to die. And then go bowling at the same time you play golf, and a rash may occur on the back of your head, which would cause an immediate heart attack. And if it causes an immediate heart attack and death, be sure to call the funeral director. Don't call the pharmaceutical industry. Every minute, there's another ad on these news channels. I, I've never seen anything like it. Whatever show I watch, every ad is for another prescription drug. This one's marching around in a salad bar, and he reaches, a woman smiles at him, and then he reaches with the tongs for some lettuce, and she notices a scab on his right arm. He has it, and she, all of a sudden, the face turns away from him. He's embarrassed. He rushes to the doctor, gives him a pill, and now suddenly he's a new man. Of course, the pill he took is liable to kill him in three minutes, but he doesn't have the rash anymore on his arm. It destroyed his liver, his lungs, and his heart, but his skin is clear, clear enough for one date at least before he dies. Well, that's America today. As I said to my children, one of whom is quite concerned about it all, just flow with it, my friends, because it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Enjoy the Whitewater Ride. This is the Savage Nation. Be here on your local station or be nowhere. Good night from the Ungranite State. Savage.